Across the country, cell phone thieves are out of control. Last month in Atlanta, this man waved a gun at workers inside a wireless store. I covered my face. In Los Angeles, a man brutally beat an 18-year-old in the lobby of her apartment building just to get a phone. But it was taken out of my hand physically. In Houston, this woman said a man ripped her cell phone right out of her hand at a nightclub then put it to use. They made several overseas calls to Japan and also Mexico. According to the Major Cities Police Chiefs Association, Houston is now a leader in cell phone thefts. In March alone, there were more than 3,500 of them, compared to 1,400 in Dallas and 144 in Austin. Thieves know they could sell your phone fast and make more than they would from watches or even jewelry. But there is something that could stop that. Everyone has it. This is the thumbprint. Radio host Michael Garfield said each phone has a unique code similar to a VIN number. He said companies can use it to disable a phone forever, destroying its aftermarket value. But they don't, because stolen cell phones still make money. And so I think if they're thinking, well, if we start deleting and banning phones and making sure they're not in use, well, that's less monthly revenue we're, we're going to be getting in. But soon that could change. More than 60 police chiefs signed off on a letter this year to the FCC recommending a blacklist for stolen phones. If implemented, it would mean wireless companies would have to stop reactivating phones on the list. An industry spokesman said they're listening and they plan to adopt that by this time next year. Ironically, many of the companies involved have already been doing it for years overseas. It was. You know, it's the police chiefs literally picking up the phone and calling us and saying, we need help. This is an issue where we could use your help. Is there anything you can do? Many of the wireless companies say they have taken steps to stop activating phones they know are stolen. But there is nothing to stop a thief from swapping out a SIM card and going to a different carrier. I think it's ridiculous. I think that there should be something that's done about it. Yeah, last time. A database could soon be that something. Owners just wonder what took so long. Andrew Horansky, KHOU 11 News. At Humble Middle School today, class was in session. 20 years of my life and y'all fired me. As officers from various police agencies ran drills to fight society's newest villain, the erratic gunman bent on killing. No longer can officers sit and wait for SWAT it's going to take a while for them to get there. Get on now, go! We no longer can wait. we got to go inside the building and take care of the problem, just like they did in Colorado. Thanks to government funding, the state's Advanced Law Enforcement Rapid Response Training Program, or ALERT, has been training officers around the country. Formed after Columbine, ALERT has built in the lessons learned from Virginia Tech, Fort Hood, and now even the Aurora Theater shooting. The guns used in the drill add to the realism. They're made by Glock. They weigh as much as a Glock, except the bullets in the clip hold soap. At Humble, the officers learn how to move into a situation quickly. And though they know nothing can truly prepare them for the real thing, they also know there is no better place for practice than a real environment. We could be going into a school, and every time we go into a classroom that has personal photos of, of you know, teachers and, and artwork of the kids and everything, it really drives that point home that that's why we're doing this is to save lives. While practicing skills they hope they'll never need in a scenario which is already too real. Andrew Horansky, KHOU 11 News. One bedroom, one bath. Dan Phillips's homes are anything but cookie cutter. This is a paper mache floor done with beer bottle labels and they are proof of what's possible because each one is made out of what was once seen as junk. When people see it, they go, oh, that's what a recycled house looks like. In one home, cow bones serve as a kitchen counter. In another, picture frames form the ceiling. Some materials were donated, others came from dumpsters. So what was the cost of this house? Uh, probably the studio and this house probably came in about 70000 for a three-bedroom, three-bath home and studio space. Yeah, yeah. Dan began building 12 years ago in his hometown of Huntsville, and he called his business Phoenix Commotion. He said he never set out to make money, but rather to do a public service, 
since single parents and artists are the kind of low-income customers he targets. So you came here specifically for this house. Nothing else, it was the house. Yes. Yep. Chris and Jessica Grundy moved from San Diego earlier this year. He records music, she's a painter. For them, California was simply too expensive. We'd be moving from place to place and not really be able to put roots down somewhere. This graphic artist was in a similar situation when he moved his family from Michigan. So we went home in March, packed everything up, and we're down here in May. They are the kind of moves small towns such as Huntsville simply don't often see. But they are proof Phillips' homes are at least a success at keeping this Texas town eccentric, eclectic, and alive. Andrew Horansky, KHOU 11 News. Because I felt personally that I needed something extra. It has become one of the most sought after treatments since Viagra. More energy, more endurance. Men have called it the fountain of youth. My health is a lot better. But when it comes to taking testosterone. All of a sudden as my energy levels went way up. Doctors are cautious. The data is controversial. They're discovering problems which include blood clots, infertility, even tumors. And prostate cancer has been a concern for men taking testosterone. Injections. Dr. Larry Lipschultz is a urologist with Houston's Baylor College of Medicine. How often do you see a patient coming to you asking for testosterone? Every day. What are some of the risks? I mean, I, I don't think there's real risks with testosterone. I think what gets miscommunicated is the men who take excess amounts of testosterone, usually from someone who's not a physician, uh, to achieve uh, unrealistic goals. Feeling like a shadow of your former self? What used to be seen as the symptoms of aging are now at the center of a billion dollar business. Introducing Cryotest. <laughs> testosterone. Over-the-counter products promise results. In Houston, a company called the Low T Center will soon open a third location. Dr. Lipschultz, however, doesn't recommend either. The so-called T clinics that are springing up are extremely entrepreneurial. They're not really targeted for the patient's health. They're targeted with a very high profit incentive. Low T declined our request for an interview. A better sex drive. Lipschultz, meantime, said testosterone changes lives. Is it addictive? The testosterone is not an addictive medication. I think what can become addictive is the good way you feel. And uh, long story short, I feel amazing. For Spencer Morris, a 24-year-old living in Toronto, testosterone changed everything. He documented his experience on YouTube. I had tried pretty much everything. So like I, I tried eating a really clean diet. Doctors determined genetics were behind his low levels and made him depressed. I sleep well at night. My body functions properly. Yet he warns that other doctors may be prescribing testosterone too easily, something that may not always lead to the healthiest results. Andrew Horansky, KHOU 11 News.